Hey, good morning. Welcome back to another episode of the She's Making an Impact podcast. I'm your host, Rachel and Gum. Today we're doing some on-air coaching and I am super duper pumped about it. So this is something that we offer to our students who are in our program, Activate. And this is just a really cool opportunity for me to give them some private coaching and some one-on-one time. And then for you to get to kind of sit in and listen and hear what that coaching is going to sound like. So if you want to apply for our next round of Activate, make sure to go to rachelandgoam.com forward slash Activate. And we got Jill on. How's it going, Jill? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Like I told you, I just woke up from a nap, so I might look kind of tired, but I'm all here. And this is what happens when you're nine months pregnant and you can't sleep and you wake up every five seconds to pee. And then, oh, my six-year-old is sharing a bed with me. (laughs) This is a funny story. Um, So my husband's in Africa and my six-year-old is sleeping with me every, every single night while he's gone, basically. And I wake up at like four o'clock in the morning today and he's using my bum as a pillow and I'm like what are you doing how did you end up sideways and how did you get all the way down there that's that's mom life anyways okay so I'm here for you um how can I support you um yes well at the moment I just I'm launching a podcast and I want to um have like I've got a a plan of what I'm going to do I've got episodes recorded and like it's my next month thing to actually launch it um, but just putting together a plan so it's actually successful and I don't kind of launch to crickets because I know how to launch a program like th- because of Activate, but actually launching a podcast, which is an ongoing thing, I'm not quite sure how to go about it. So oh. at the moment, sorry? No, go ahead. Um, at the moment, I've got, uh, the plan is I'm going to have like six episodes recorded. Okay. And so I'll just kind of have them out there, but kind of promote them in you know, a couple of days at a time three days at a time just for the first few weeks and then just weekly. Um, And I've got my communities that I can promote them to, like my online communities for my health coaching business. Um, But other than that, I'm not quite sure what to do about it. Okay. So in the beginning, you might not have like a ton of people listening and that's okay. I'll give you everything that I did when we launched our podcast. So we launched with three episodes. We had like an introduction episode. If you want to go back and listen to that, you can. It's not very good. Um, and then we had a Q&A. And then, let's see, I interviewed Megan. Um, so it was fun. I launched with those three. And, um, you know, as soon as it did launch, we had a contest. So it was um, like if you rate and leave a review of the podcast, we did a contest. I forget what we gave away. We gave away something. And so I would do something like that. And that's going to help you. The more people that you have downloading and the more people you have leaving a review, that will increase your odds of being on new and noteworthy in iTunes. And so yeah. you want as many of those as humanly possible. So I would include all the Activate students in that contest and yeah. see if they'll jump on and support you and leave you a review because it takes like 0.2 seconds. Um, yeah. Let's see. We had... Lizzie was on our team at the time, so we had her create like Insta stories and that kind of stuff, actually showing how to leave a review on iTunes. And so, because a lot of people don't know (laughs) how to do it or they don't do it right. And so we actually gave them instructions on how to rate and review the show. And then we sent out emails letting people know, like, we're doing this contest. Um, So that's kind of what you can do to get a ton of listeners right away. Um, That's what we did we launched it yeah that's good um so with um like once i have actually launched it i oh what i wanted to ask is with um with your promotions like obviously at the end of an episode you've like we've got this challenge coming up Mm -hmm. um do you I have read about you can have um, little segments where it will change. Yeah, so- you could change all of those. So you can have like different promotions in your introduction. So yeah. I literally, as I did this, I talked about activate and how you can apply and get on the wait list and that kind of thing. You could do a mid roll. So we have mid rolls too. And so I literally just record something and then I send it to Lizzie and she keeps it in Google Drive. And when she's editing it in, um, garage band I think is what she uses then she'll just insert that into the episode and then you can do one at the end too yeah okay 
because I was thinking for my kind of end thing, like each time um, there's a podcast that I listen to and she's like, if you love this, come and join us in our, you know, with actual coaching course. Yeah. Um, so I'll do that, but just, um, yeah, just trying to work out how to fit it in was just like in the I middle. would do a mid-roll and that mid-roll could be a call to action, get on your email list and download your free thing. And yeah. then at the end, you could do a call to action and join the Facebook group if you want. Yeah. Yeah, because what I'm doing at the moment, like there are some where it's just me talking yeah, and there are other ones where I'm interviewing people, which is, you know, to get in front of their audiences as well. And just because, you know, to keep it interesting. Um, yeah, I'm just, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, so once I've got that launched, I've also got a, um, I've got two sides to my business, which, you know, I've got the, the health coaching side to it and the Vegketo side to it. And I won't bring the Vegketo side to the podcast as much. Okay. Um, I kind of feel that it might alienate people. Do you think that that is I don't a thing? think it will. I think it will bring in the right people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Never worry about alienating people by niching down. Yeah, because I don't want it to be just about that either. And no. like the people, the people that I've like, it's quite broad at the moment. Just the people I've been interviewing. Um, but I, yeah, I definitely don't want to alienate people. I think you're fine. I would have some. I would have some specific veg keto episodes in there. Um, and the cool thing about iTunes and podcasting is it's a search engine. And so you can use yeah. those terms like vegan keto and that kind of thing. And people yeah. that are searching for it will find it. So people search Pinterest marketing and they find us. Yeah. So with, I know that you use YouTube as well. Yep. How much of your podcast stuff goes to YouTube or is it ever the same content or how much of that is repurposed? All the interviews go there. And then if I do a solo episode, there are times I might do video too. And then that would go on YouTube. Yeah. But it's not every time. Because not every time I feel like doing video <laughs> to go with it. I'm like, I just need to do a quick and dirty podcast. Um, and then I don't record video with it. So then it won't go on YouTube. Um, but if yeah. I record video with it, then it does. Yeah. Because I've like a lot of all my interviews have been Zoom calls. And so... But then I don't often, I look at myself and think, oh my gosh, I don't want anyone. <laughs> I haven't really like prettied up to do any of that stuff. So totally. Just, so again, yeah. like with the solo episodes too, like I might do a solo episode and it might be on like five things about X, Y, and Z. So I might do the audio and then when I feel up to doing video that day, um, I might go back and record a few different videos um, yeah. that would be be like the same or similar content but broken up into like three different pieces yeah yeah that's good yeah and then you don't have to be or it doesn't have to be all together when you actually record it no you could just like let people know like this is a three-part series this is part one we're talking about this yeah mm -hmm. cool yeah that's that's kind of like where I was at just kind of wondering how to get it out there so that's that's good so you have um, interviews that you're doing. So you're interviewing like other experts, that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so what, oh, sorry. Go. What I what I would do is make sure you have some really great social sharing images and Instagram stories and that kind of thing. And when you post it, tag them, um, yeah. and like tag them on Instagram, tag them on Facebook, tag them wherever it is that you're putting it, and um, email them and let them know, hey, your episode is live. Like we've gotten such great feedback already. Here are the links to share on social. Here's the link to email your list. You could even create like a little email for them to send to their list if they wanted to promote it. That's a good idea. It's really good. That's about all I've got at the moment, actually. That's all you've got? <laughs> no, no. Like I just, I, I, when I asked the question, you just answer it so easily <laughs> a lot of times um, people make like this big thing in their head of like this is a huge thing and then the answer is really simple like they overcomplicate mm -hmm. it yeah I've oh I'll tell you what's going on with me then since yeah that, all those answered. um I've got my 
first Veg Keto webinar starting tomorrow, my like mm-hmm. actual webinar. Amazing. Um, yeah, so that's good. And and I've got 10 people signed up for it so far. So that's a, but ooh, the idea is to get it going evergreen. So just, I've got a few um, lined up to record them. And so hopefully they'll go well, but I'm feeling really good about it. And really, um, I don't know, I feel like the content's good. I feel like people are going to get a lot out of it. Yeah. And like I've tried webinars, a webinar in the past, like just really quickly before Christmas, just to play with webinar jam. And I felt a bit salesy and a bit weird, but I feel this time, like the second time around, I kind of pulled it in. So I feel a bit more comfortable about it. So that's really cool. Yeah. I mean, the first time you do a webinar, it's, it's, it's not the last, you know, like you got to keep practicing and practicing and there might be t- like webinars that you run and you're like, oh, I, I did way too much pitching and this one and not enough content. And so like yeah. you in Activate, you have that tracking spreadsheet. So you're looking at your stats of the webinar and stuff. So I always um, put notes there. And so like I go back and look at my past webinars and I'm like, you pitched too early. Like you went through the meat of the content too quickly, like breezed over it. And so by the time I got to the pitch, we were only like a half an hour in. It, it felt salesy because I felt like I didn't add enough value. But if you yeah. add enough value beforehand, then it's like you earn the right to pitch because they need to know what their next step is going to be. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly where I feel at the moment. Cause last time, like I wasn't quite sure what I was doing and it, and we were lucky enough to have your templates. And so I was like, you know, kind of copy and paste or well, not copy and paste, but you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. pretty much running straight from that. And it, yeah. And in the end it didn't feel quite right. And then after the first one, I cut some of the salesy bits back and then, you know, but this time, like just kind of starting fresh with a whole new webinar, like yeah. actual, yeah, it feels really good. Yeah. I mean, the more you do it, the more comfortable you're going to feel, the more confident you're going to feel. That's why I tell everyone just go like, get it done. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and you'll always just make it better. And every time you do it, you're going to get better and more confident. Yeah. Yeah. So what I've been doing is last time I did it, I tried in webinar jam Yeah. and I just did a 14 day trial and then like canceled it because I was going away for a month. Yeah. Um, And then looking at this time, it's like, just looking at other options of what, how I could put it out there. Cause I do want to do it evergreen, mm-hmm. but I've um, been doing it through zoom. Okay. I'm going to do it through zoom just cause I found it was just a bit cheaper to do it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, but then once I've recorded it, I think I'll take it back over to ever webinar is the plan at the moment. Yeah. So. That's, I mean, I think it's the best platform for sure. Does, uh, do you know if Kartra does evergreen webinars now? I'm not sure. That might be something Maybe. to look into because we were thinking about switching over at some point. Um, it didn't make sense now because we already paid for like click funnels and active campaign and all that stuff for the entire year, like up front. Um, yeah. but if they do evergreen webinars and that kind of thing, it might be looking a good thing to look into. Cause I believe it's only a hundred bucks a month and you do, it has like everything. Yeah. Cause I think I read that ClickFunnels also does webinars now. Does that sound right? Uh, Might be clunky. <laughs> it's probably super clunky if it, they do. Um, I remember like trying to put our courses in there because they have a place where you can add your courses and it was like a hot mess. Um, yeah. So if, yeah, I, I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think probably every webinar will be the way to go. I'm just like trying to find the right software to consolidate as much as I can if they for sure look into Kartra and see if they have ever like evergreen webinar features and if they do that's going to be like the number one place where you can consolidate as much as possible because they really do have like everything in one Um, if not sign up for ever webinar for another 14 day free trial and I believe if you cancel and you don't continue they'll email you an offer code to get it cheaper yeah, um, I, because I went back to Webinar Jam again recently, and they, I think it was maybe a month for a dollar or something if you went back. So I'm not sure what the deal will be, but they have something. They have something. So it's worth it signing up for the 14 day free trial, canceling, and then seeing what they offer you. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's all going good. I feel like it's moving forward. So. I know it's so exciting to see how far you've come yeah what else what 
Um, yeah, looking to get more stuff on YouTube too, but I think that's kind of a you know, crossover from the podcast. Like just, and I've been getting in front of my audience a lot more. Yeah. And it's interesting because I, like sometimes it feels like you're talking to nobody and then <laughs> yes. <laughs> in the beginning yeah. it's like hello does anyone hear me like and then I'll see people down the street and they're like hey I saw this thing and it was great I'm like what we oh, <laughs> see you got but lurkers people... they might not like... be that's what happens at first they don't comment they don't like you have no idea that they're there but they're watching and so yeah. just keep going, keep going. And eventually the lurkers will turn into commenters and yeah. then turn into clients. So it's yeah. one of those things you just have to keep showing up, keep showing up, keep showing up. And when those kind of things happen, I'm like, oh my gosh, people are watching are. and say good things about it. I was like, okay, then I think I must be doing something right. And I'm yeah. feeling better about it and more confident. So that's really good. So just kind of tying in the um, YouTube podcast aspect like because that's how I consume media like I don't necessarily sit down and read blog part po ugh, blog posts and things yeah like I do when I can but you know I listen while I'm doing other things so totally. I feel like that's a really good way to get people to in front of my stuff yeah oh stuff in front of people have you hired a social media manager that's going to help you with all this I have put something on Upwork and I'm in the process of doing it perfect okay good because yeah. like you mentioned podcast and then youtube i'm like that's gonna be a lot of work if you're gonna do all that your own um yeah. so i want to make sure you have someone on your team that's helping you with all that because that's something that i was like i feel a tiny bit overwhelmed about getting all that done so that's definitely something that i've been doing focus on the podcast first hire your person and then have them help you with youtube and then repurpose the podcast content to put it in all these different places yeah. So what kind of person does that? Is that a social media person? manager? Social media manager. That's what Lizzie does for us. Yeah. Yeah. She just takes the podcast and then she'll put them into like little two minute clips and put them on Facebook, um, on Instagram. She'll create Instagram stories for them. Um, so yeah. Them kind of all over the place. So she like literally just does all your social media. Yep. Pretty much. <laughs> All podcasts, all social media. Yep, she's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so just figure out where you want to be, what you want, you know, everything to look like and hire that person and train them, you know, kind of show them like your branding and everything. Um, at first, they're not going to get it right. And so just give them feedback and then like work closely together in the beginning. And now Lizzie is so independent. She's just like doing her own thing. She knows what she needs to do. Um, she voxes me if she has any questions, but she's been with us for like two years. So she knows our style, our brand. She knows my voice. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so how much of the design element did she do at the start? Like, did you have a visual design prepared to kind of. Say she this knew our brand colors and she saw like our website and that kind of thing. And in the beginning, the first couple like Instagram pictures and stories that she made, I was like. Ooh, that's not, that's not like my style at all. So I gave her feedback. Like you cannot expect someone to join your team and then know exactly like they're not inside your head. You know, they don't know what you're thinking. And so you just have to tell them like, okay, I love this. This part's really good. Let's change this. So it looks a little more like this and just show them examples. Like in the beginning, you have to hold their hand a little bit, but now she knows it enough where she just runs with it. Yeah. And so how much contact do you have, like, to start with, would you have with somebody like that? I would do, gosh. So I always think of John Maxwell um, when he talks about, like, leadership training. So in the beginning, I do it, you watch. Mm -hmm. Then we do it together. Then you do it, I watch. Then you do it and you teach someone else. And yeah. so in the beginning, they might be, like, shadowing you to see what you're doing. And then you might be kind of holding hands and she'll be, you know, doing her thing, but sending you stuff. And maybe you're giving her like daily reports or that kind of thing, or you're talking on Voxer and you set up like a weekly Zoom or something like that. But then yeah. pretty soon after they really understand like the workflow and everything that's going on, then they're done. Yeah. Because I just kind of imagine that when I do get my magical Lizzie, um, that I will like, I understand that show except I don't 
like being able to do all the stuff. I don't have the skills to do all the stuff. So what, how would I show them? Or would be, can you show them examples? And Lizzie created a process street for all of our activate students where it's like what she does with our social media, like to create the Insta stories and repurposing content. So what she showed at the event. Yeah. So you can take that and hand it off to them. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. what else i'm getting so hot this is when you're nine months pregnant and you're just like (sighs) okay (laughs) yeah that's they're just my big things at the moment like they're just especially like the webinar i'm pretty excited to get that out there yeah that's Um, super exciting yeah so just getting all that rolling I, i feel like like all the pieces are kind of there i just need to but i think hiring people is definitely the thing that i need to really get onto more yeah because and I've been making an effort to like shut my computer at three o'clock like when I pick my kids up from school Mm -hmm. that's my thing this year perfect I love that so it it makes me more productive in the morning yeah or during the day but um yeah it's been good and I haven't been feeling as overwhelmed by everything and I think I've still been getting as much done you do it's crazy like you'll whatever you have to do it'll like expand to how much time you allow it so if you give yourself three hours to write a blog post it'll take you three hours if you give yourself half an hour it'll take half an hour like you just got to sit down and make it happen and I love that you're stopping work at three like that's amazing because balance has been such a big thing like I've just Mm -hmm. like I've been working and working and working and then it's like is it worth it and sometimes if they, you know, there isn't as much money coming in, like if I still have that space and the balance in life, then it, it's fine. Yeah. You know, if that's all I have, then it just does my head in. Yeah. yeah. Are you taking weekends off or at least one day over the weekend? Yeah. yeah. Good. Good. It's, yeah. it's so crazy. Like before you're like working, working, working like crazy. And then when you realize you can't take time off and no one dies, it's like, oh, I should do this yeah. more often. <laughs> I was away for a month over Christmas and that like still keeping things kind of running and I could have had them running better. And I came back and like, Oh yeah, I didn't really launch it over that month or anything. So I don't have like new people coming in, but then if I had a team, then hopefully more of that would be able to keep going on its own. If you had a team and you had an evergreen webinar and a system that's driving traffic to it, then you would be getting new clients. And so like, you're so close. You're at the cusp of having those systems in place. Like this is like three to six months down the road where you will be able to take a month off and still have new clients come in. Yeah. Well, that's definitely the plan, but it feels like all the pieces are there and it's so close. Exciting. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. I'm pretty happy about how it's all going at the moment, actually. Yay. Cool. Well, where can we connect with you, learn more about you? Sure. Um, well, hopefully very soon the Fit Chick Health Coach podcast will be out there. So if Woo-hoo. you, if anyone's listening to that, um, the Fit Chick Health Coach.com is my website and I've got a freebie there for meal prepping, which is great because I know that so many of us are so busy yes. um, and it's just set yourself up to succeed for the week. Um, I've also got easyvegketo.com where I got a another freebie on there which is a vegetarian keto food list and i'm on facebook as well and instagram and all those things cool well thanks for being on the podcast jill i adore you and it's i'm so proud of you and how far you've come so keep crushing it awesome thank you so much for having me